Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back. Now today we're going to talk about the fifth portion of our product research techniques and tools that we use. So today we're going to talk about seasonality. Now it is something that is somewhat of a forbidden fruit if you know what I mean that a lot of people don't like getting into because they're scared of it that it may act, they may actually commit a crime so to speak, right? Or a sin. So, and it is true to a point that seasonal products are not for newbies. A lot of new Facebook or sorry Amazon sellers love to sell niche products, love to sell, they're excited about a season like let's say Halloween, right? Who is not? They want to sell masks, they want to sell clothes and all kinds of stuff. But not having the experience and data to back up your sales is one of the riskiest thing you can do on Amazon and I'm telling you guys stay away from it. If you're a new seller, I never, never want to encourage you guys into something that I wouldn't do myself. And I'm telling you guys, I've made that mistake. So, long story short, I want to tell you guys the story about my experience when I started doing seasonal products. Now, this was my third product and even though I had some experience with Amazon and uh, I wanted to get into seasonal products. Now, what I wanted to sell was somewhat of a niche product. So it was for Christmas and I wanted to sell Santa hats. And a lot of people buy Santa hats all over. They use them as stockings, like all kinds of stuff. I mean, Christmas is big in the Western uh, civilization. Um, and I knew that there was gonna be sales for me. So, but what happened was that I never had historical data. I didn't do proper product research on it. Um, I didn't know my timelines. So what happened was I started contacting suppliers, I kid you not, in September. Okay? Now, we got September, so it was like somewhere between, I think, 25th or 27th of September. So we got October and November in between, and then December is basically Christmas, right? So what happened is that even though I thought I had a lot of time, you know, I'm going to get into this product and uh, um, it's going to be here you know i'm going to do ocean freight and it is going to come here and i'm going to sell the hell out of it right what happened nothing goes according to plan guys so what happened was that i started looking for this product and i started researching on alibaba street without having to do any product research that okay let's take a look at the sales let's take a look at historical sales let's take a look at what my competitors are doing which now I use Jungle Scout, right? Like to uh, the Chrome extension to run against my competitors to see their units that are selling every day, their price ranges and all that, right? Link is below for 20% 20, 20 off, guys. So take advantage of that if you can. So yeah, so what I started to do is none of that. I just went straight to Alibaba and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna find the supplier and I'm gonna sell it. I contacted two suppliers. One of them responded back to me. Uh, sold me the product at a higher price than it was since I was excited you know what I didn't do any research I didn't contact three to five at, or at least five suppliers that I should like I now normally do I have at least three codes to compare whenever I'm bringing my product so what happened was that I got ripped off in the price first of all second was I chose my own forwarder right I'm like you know what guys I have experience, I know some people in the industry because I have some logistics background. I'm gonna find the best forwarder and I'm gonna do this. Mr. Supplier, you don't tell your forwarder to do this shipment, I'm gonna pick it up at the door, at your door, right? And I went with the worst possible inco term, which is Xworks, right? Xworks means that you as a buyer are responsible to pick up your product straight from the manufacturer's warehouse and you're responsible for the entire journey of your product. And to make things worse, now as you know, it's a lighter item. I didn't need to really do ocean freight, but I did ocean freight. What happens because of the congestion of how many shipments are actually of all these companies that are bringing shipments to get ready for Q4, right? And I'm actually trying to get on the same vessels. My forwarder goes, you know, don't worry, we'll take care of your shipment. You know, your shipment will be here between 30 to 35 days. Um, it will, we'll put it in Amazon warehouse. No problem, we'll take care of it. A week goes by, I get a message that my container has been bumped, right, off the cargo ship um, because 
What happens if you guys don't know with steamship lines is that they give priority to their good clients. If you're a one-off guy like me, I wasn't even I wasn't even doing a full container. I was consolidating with all these other small shippers, right? And mine was um, like not even half a container. It was slightly less. I forgot the exact cubic meters that I had, and um, because it was, I just wanted to try out this uh, this seasonal product. So. What happens is my forward economy is like, you know what, your container has been bumped off, but we're going to try to get it on next week's sailing schedule. I'm like, you know what, okay, I have some time, uh, you know what, I can do this and now. By the time I, first of all, my product was manufactured, so it took about three weeks. So we were already like um, uh, later October. And now like, you know what, I'm like, okay, so it'll be here by 1st of December. Now I'm looking at that timeline, right? Because it's already bumped by a week. So, and I'm expecting the best possible time. Next thing I know, I get another call from my forwarder and it's been bumped again. Because why? These big retailers that bring products into Canada and the United States, they get first dips. Their containers need to come here first. They will come first because steamship lines make money off them. What are they making out of me, right? peanuts compared to these guys gets bumped off again now i'm looking at mid-december delivery so you guys can see I'm, my frustration and my mistakes in this right so needless to say that my product got so delayed that it got here on 23rd of december and now you look running into holidays right you got holiday season in between you got like forwarders that are closed at certain times now amazon fba like i'm trying to and that's another thing i did i did not because i was so caught up with the stuff the product and all that that i did not work on my listing properly you know what i basically slapped it all together i remember i did my copywriting in one night and i did it myself i didn't do any search engine optimization like i've told you guys i didn't do any of um what do you call uh, doing the description properly I didn't do the uh, bullet points properly and I did not do a proper title yes I had the product title in it but it was not optimized so that people can search for my product needless to say I sold about 10 units guys I was stuck with 440 units now think about that what am I gonna do at that point right now I'm gonna run into inventory charges from FBA because you're still gonna pay inventory. They're holding your product in their warehouses. Nothing is free in this world. So, and yeah, I mean that mistake has costed me enough to teach me that do things right. Um, one of the models that I always live by is whatever starts wrong ends wrong. And I'm telling you guys, if you don't start this the right way, it is gonna end wrong for you. So seasonal products, beware of what are you bringing, what season it's for. Make sure you have at least four months ahead of time that you manufacture your product and you time it so that you um, accommodate a little bit of, uh, what do you call, a little bit of building, a little bit of uh, buffer for your shipping times. Make sure it gets uh, to a warehouse properly. If you're rushing it and you really want it here, make sure you do air freight. If your product is light, do freaking air freight. Don't do like Ocean that I did. Like it was the rookie mistake. It was I, My product could have been here in five days as opposed to like a month and a half. And a lot of people don't do air freight just because of the cost, right? So that's a perfect opportunity for you to take advantage and do air freight because when the demand is not as high and the ocean is really high because everybody everybody's bringing huge amounts of products so they are doing container loads so they're doing ocean so take advantage of these kind of things if your product is really light because at the end of the day what matters is your business you want to make sure you make the best possible decisions for your business if you are a newbie do not get into uh, seasonal products it is a risky business um, learn how to deal with products all year round. I would say at least to spend a year with Amazon. Really build your business. Make sure you're generating like 10K a month in revenue. Make sure you have a group of products, like a catalog of products that if, you're, um, if your seasonal product is, doesn't work out, right? At least you have uh, five, six other products to fall back on. And that's what you want to do. You never want to put your eggs in one basket like I did, guys. Like, and now, that was my third product, and 
I had two other products that were doing okay and uh, the third product failed so it took out a big chunk of my money and uh, profits from the other ones um, to invest into this one to pull the product ship it to my house and then sell it by other means so I sold it differently through like eBay and stuff like that try to get rid of the product guys so it is a lot of work if you don't do it right so seasonal products I would say stay away if you're a newbie if you're not a newbie they are actually they can be very profitable because you do a blitz of sales um, during that time of the year and if you do it right you could make a lot of money now I've done a lot of seasonal products since then but I've done it the right way and I've made my money with them still not my favorite thing just because of the stress that is involved with it but nonetheless like it's something to do and add to your uh, product if it's an accessory that complements your other products even better so always think about that kind of stuff and how you can upsell and how can you relate your products together to upsell so um, I hope I hope my experience has taught you guys something valuable thanks again for watching guys subscribe hit the bell button leave a comment like this video if you learned something valuable and I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have Thanks again, have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys next time.